When I was first brought on board for I-308, I was given lecture slides from the previous instructors. So basically, I would go on a lecture, I would talk for an hour and 15 minutes, trying to explain these concepts to the students. That's how I started it out. The problem was that the concepts are kind of new to the students in, in the School of Informatics from the standpoint of that ERDs or Entity Relationship Diagrams is a, is a concept where they're taking information from a client, trying to get information out of them to build a database system from the, from the foundation up to it actually being run. Um, also SQL is the other language that we teach them, which is a different type of programming language than they're used to, which is Python. So the co combination of these two new methods or th thinkings and then that there is no one right answer for an ERD or a MySQL statement made it very difficult for students because they wanted the one answer. And for my class, I'm trying to teach them that there is no one answer. There's different ways of thinking. There are multiple correct answers. You, it's up to you to come up with that answer. And that was very difficult for them. What I've also seen is that the students who never read the individual one don't do that more than once or twice because then the teams really get on top of them. And you can see as an individual, you don't feel, you feel the pressure that, okay, I'm letting my team down. I'm here to help everybody else and I'm not doing my job. And I do hear that comments and then walk around listening to people. I can, I can see them saying, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to read this one before class. I'm really sorry, I'll make sure I don't do that again. So it's really more of a pressure for them to, to help the team members, help them succeed. So there's more likely that people are gonna do the individual readings as opposed to not having, even just doing individual quiz, doesn't seem to be as much of an incentive as letting the team members down. TBL helps students with that kind of thinking from the standpoint that it gave them another way or another resource for actually understanding the material. What I did with TBL is that they take the readings outside of class, they hit the reading before they come in, we give them a short IRAT or a short quiz as an individual, they then take that same quiz as a team and they find out the answers right then and there, what the answers are to the quick questions. Um, this gave them material outside of class, then they sat in the lecture instead of me talking for the whole hour and 15 minutes, the lecture is now an hour and 45 minutes or an hour and 50 minutes. And I may do a brief talk. I still have slides, I still have things like that. I made more difficult concepts. I tried to explain a little bit first, but then we do problems. They sit in their teams. They have huddle boards, which are basically three by four whiteboards that the four team members sit around. Everybody has their own marker and I give them problems now instead. So now they're actually doing things in the lecture rather than trying to listen to me and understand the concepts. The big thing that TBL has given me the most is that there's four people sitting in a team, plus myself or an AI who walk around. It gives all these different people, if somebody has a, a, an idea of it and they say, well, I don't quite understand, it gives three other people a chance to explain it. My job now becomes to making sure that they're explaining it right and they're on the right track because I can look at the huddle boards, I can see what they're talking about, things like that. It gives the students, I think, a lot better opportunity with a different, because there's different learning, people learn at different rates and things like that. So giving me all these different tools and ways of doing it improve their success in understanding this material. I, I like TBL because here's what I like about my class. I go to my class, I don't have sleeping students. I have students who are engaged, talking, my class is noisy. They close the doors on my class because people are talking so much in it. And it's, it's, it's fun, it's, it's exciting, it's invigorating. My class is nine o'clock in the morning. Nothing gets you more excited than having to have people talking to you, asking questions, raising hands, discussing with each other. Um, it's, it's, it's really encouraging to me to see students being actively happy and working together in a classroom. And that's one reason why I really like TBL is because that level. How do I form teams in TBL is a method that I have for questions. And basically the questions are, how much do you like solving problems? How technical do you feel you are? How prepared do you feel you are for this class? And how well do you like working in a team setting? These four questions, they, they self-identify themselves. They rate themselves from one to five, five being highest. I then line them up across the line from highest to lowest, and then I pick out the 14 members for each team. So teams end up having usually one person who feels confident about the class, feels good about it, has probably two people that are eh, mediocre about it, they think they can do it, and then sometimes there's one person who doesn't feel that good about the class. So this team basis, you have somebody who thinks they know what they're doing, doesn't necessarily mean they do, but they think they know what they're doing, two people who are somewhat confident, and then one person doesn't feel too confident. So it gives this mixture of people in a team. So. What have I done for good problems, for kind of good problems in this class? What I found is that for my class, it's all building blocks. We build upon previous information. For ERDs, you start, you start basic. So what I've done with my problems is I now have the capability of taking the basics and then each semester or each, each class, they, do a, they usually do a reading, they get new material. So I take the build basic block and then I add in this one new concept at a time. 
So it gives the students a chance to reiterate again on what they've learned, make sure they understand it, and then add in a new piece. And that seems to be the best way to do the problems for this class is to build upon what they've learned and then use it as a starting point for the next new item. Of course, when I go to SQL, I still kind of build upon ERDs because they have to understand that this table that there's this table that they're building in the database came from these ERDs that they did before. So the whole class is kind of the continuous building upon each other till they get to the upper level of actually creating the database. So when did I really get TBL? Uh, I started, I learned about TBL my first year that I was here through uh, the Collegium, which is a faculty led group here and the CITL, which came in, we spent a whole semester on TBL. And we were talked about, we explained what it was, so forth and so on. We went through the whole process of it. Um, I decided that next year I would convert the whole class to TBL. The first year I did not get it. It really was, I knew basically, I understood what I should be doing and how I should be doing, but I didn't have that confidence level yet. So in that initial conversion, taking all the lectures, changing everything, I didn't really change everything as much as I tried to incorporate the lectures into the TBL environment. And it was nerve wracking. It was really hard. Um, I found that by the second year, I was more comfortable with the material. I had a better understanding of how to pull pieces out, modify pieces, put things back in, because everything's like a five or, or a 10 or 15 minute segment. So I could pull a problem out, put a different one in its place if it didn't work. I found that option. So it was really the second year that I really started getting it. And I'll stay after doing it for four years. I still don't totally get it just because it is a unique way and as things are changing and there's always different ways of thinking about and applying it. So to me, it's always good to try doing different things in it. Um, my first suggestion is don't make sure that make sure that's not your very first class ever taught. That's it's a very hard technique to jump right into. Once you get into it, don't expect the first year to be a success because you're still going to be nervous. You're still going to be trying to figure out what works best with your material in your class. TBL, I think TBL can handle every single situation out there for classes but you have to figure out how to apply it best for your material. Um, be prepared for students to accuse you of being lazy. That they're used to having people sit up there and talk for an hour and a half, or however long it is, and just talk and talk and try explaining things. And now they're having to explain it to each other. And what I've come to now saying is like this, from the second year on, I've, I've always said, okay, TBL is now about me not wanting to do the work. It's about having you understand the material better. And one of, the, one of the good ways is having somebody else explain it to you if you don't understand it, or having to explain it to somebody else really changes the way you think about the material. If you can explain it to somebody else, then that means that you have a great understanding of the material. I used to a class something called CATS, which is Classroom Assessment Techniques. And they're usually a form of a question at the end of the, end of the, uh, the lecture, I usually run a CAT. It's usually asking questions like, can you explain to me in your own words what a join is? And a join is a SQL term of joining two tables together. So I have them test to see if they understand what the knowledge is that I gave it to them. So each week, I usually run some type of cat that tests what the main points I want them to get in that classroom. If five or 10 are really below what I would consider to be good, then I know I need to do a little bit more because more than likely there's more than five or 10 that have not gotten that idea concept right and are not quite willing to admit to it. So. CATS used me good to help, to give me an idea of how the next lecture, if I want to go back to that point, spend a little more time on it, give them a new problem, a new example to work on. TBL is tough for them because it's actually working as a team, not as a group. Group, group work is a dirty word to students because there's usually people who don't participate, don't work, things like that. Teamwork is different because I punish the people who don't do the work. The team can punish them. They can kick them off their team. They can give them lower grades. It's impacted. So I would say overall, Nobody likes taking my class, but what I've heard from students who've talked to me and more, more importantly, I've heard from faculty and different staff members like career services and advising, they have a lot of students to come back and say that while I didn't like taking Dan's class, I found it to be the most useful class in, in informatics because I have knowledge that I retained and I do use it on my daily job. Um, so far what I've done, I'm, I'm going to do a more thorough study and get everything out, but what I've done preliminary is that I've looked at the very first year I taught it when I did just a lecture style. And the class average there was uh, a C plus B minus range, maybe a B. Um, finals and midterms were in that same range. So that was pretty much so normal for that class. Um, the first year I did TBL, went up very little, more of like the B, B, plus, B, B minus range, things like that. But then the last three years that I've been teaching it, the class average has now gone from a B to B plus range. So I've seen this half a grade increase within this time frame, 
and mainly it's because they are retaining the material better. So the final exam, midterm grades are turning out to be higher. Final project scores are being higher. So they actually understand material. They're able to make a final project that is more what I would expect. Um, I really love team-based learning. Um, you get a you get a camaraderie between your classmates and you work towards a common goal. And I, I really think that is similar to the real world. And instead of just doing um, individual work by yourself and coming up with some mistakes and you know learning that way, whereas if you're with um, a team, maybe you make a mistake and someone else makes a different mistake, but then you learn off of each other and you, uh, you I, I just see better results basically with team-based learning. I think team-based learning is really helpful as long as you are, I feel like it opens up a lot of avenues for asking questions because it's really intimidating to ask questions when it's just a quiet room, just the instructor speaking, but if you're asking your peers at the table, it makes it a lot easier to do that and work together and you can communicate a lot more than if it was just lecture-based. Um, I feel like team-based learning, especially like in the computer classes with learning languages, it's really important. I don't know how I could do it without like asking my peers around me for help and going over things. Yeah.